What are the biggest barriers and, and why are you optimistic, Stan? Um, I think the biggest barrier to us is the competition is do nothing. And if we look back at big things in America, I spoke this morning to, to some of you about the Erie Canal, a 363 mile long ditch that was dug between 1817 and 1825 that revolutionized transportation in America because it allowed the Ohio River Valley to connect to the East Coast, to, to New York. And so it was huge and it was derided. It was called the big ditch and people said it's too difficult and it's too expensive and it's too this. And every time we face something like that and we sort of get daunted by the task, people say, well, let's, let's step back and just do incremental things. And so what I worry most is people just being scared by the enormity of doing things in America. We rise to the occasion when we have an existential threat, when we have a civil war, when we have a depression, we have World War II. But that's not what threatens America. Now, what threatens America is a slow but steady deterioration, a slow but steady polarization, a slow but steady minimization of what people do. And so it's harder to call people to the ramparts now because they just don't hear the Indians out there attacking or they don't hear whatever they're scared of. And yet it's time to look at this because it's going to take a while to fix things. We're talking about investing in something that's going to take a generation to pay direct benefits. But if we don't invest now, a generation from now, they're going to be in a very difficult position and we will have missed the opportunity to do that. But I'm optimistic because I'm around young people who are completely committed. Every time I talk to people like in this room today, I see people who absolutely understand and support this kind of thing. And then when I see the data on millennials and the millennials that I uh, deal with, there's a thirst for it. We just need the courage to pull it together. Carrie? And I would actually agree with you. I mean, I think it's political will, and I think it's because it's not an emergency. I was, as you heard from my bio, I was around for the birth of the president's emergency plan for AIDS relief, which was a $15 billion initiative started by President Bush. And the reason we got it through, it was a broad-based coalition. It involved everything from small faith-based organizations to activists, HIV AIDS activists, and everything in between. But the reason they could motivate is because it was an emergency situation. And so somehow we have to make, maybe we have to make this into an emergency. I mean, I do actually believe it is an emergency. So somehow we need to be able to convey that a little bit more effectively perhaps. But I also agree with you. I feel tremendously hopeful. I am every day surrounded by incredible young people who inspire me, who are committed to making a difference and are using the tools and technologies that have, they have available to them to make a difference right now where they are. There is so much interest, so much creative thinking out there. So if we can get the dialogue going and increase it and make it a cultural norm, then I am firmly convinced that we're gonna be able to, to mobilize a million people.